If you're a new DM or an experienced DM who wants to try crafting for their table, this video is for you. There are a lot of great tutorials out there that you can follow to make polished looking terrain. Black Magic Craft is a great example. In my opinion, those videos are about leveling up your crafting skill. For those who have never tried, this is your crafting session zero. I'm going to show you how to get started, quick things you can make on game day, fun simple ways to work crafting into your D&D games. What will I need? Whatever you have. There are tools and materials that will save you time and effort, but if you don't have access to those, or you can't afford them, then use what you have around the house. Cardboard and scissors will take you very far. A good map will bring the characters into the setting and can be done in minutes. In two minutes, I drew this passable map. It has a river, boulders, trees. I would happily use this map in a home game. If you have a few extra minutes and you want to upgrade your map making skill, adding color will make a huge difference. You can use whatever you have. Colored pencils work great. But what I have found to be the most effective way to add color to a map is watercolors. Don't be intimidated. Watercolors are super easy to use. Simply water them down and slap them on. Watercolors will make it look like you really know what you're doing. Adding color to this map took 10 minutes, and once it was dry, it looked pretty awesome. Using watercolor will warp the paper a little bit, but I think the effect is well worth it. If I had 15 extra minutes and I wanted to spice up this map, I would add a bridge. This could be as simple as a piece of cardboard folded over a paper towel roll. That is a totally functional map that will be super fun for your players. I'm going to take things one step further using some dollar store foam board and a hot chocolate tin. I started by drawing out my design. I used the curve of the tin to dictate the size. The highest point will be the height of the wall, the walkway will go over the curve of the tin. I cut off the part I needed from the tin. Then I cut my design out of foam board twice. Using hot glue, I attached both pieces to the hot chocolate curve. Then using that as my guide, I found the width of the bridge. Next, I cut out a long piece of foam board at that width. Then using my design as a guide, scored the board where I wanted it to bend. The board being the right shape, I glued it in place. I had a little extra time, so I trimmed up the rough edges and added a few thumbtacks to add a fun little detail. Add that to the map we made earlier and you've got yourself a great encounter. Altogether, this map took 25 minutes. My favorite trick, if I don't have a lot of time, is to use ready-made things. Toys, trash, things around the house. With just three dollar store gift boxes, I made a super engaging city street map. All I did was cover the boxes in grid paper and draw on them with a sharpie. You don't have to be as detailed as I was, some street lines and some doors will give you the same effect. With a map like this, your players will seek out cover. They'll try and get onto the rooftops and do parkour from building to building. <laughs> now you may be thinking, well sure, that map looks great with minis, but I don't have any minis. Fret not, my sweet child, you do not need minis to play D&D. My first year DMing, I used game pieces from a clue board. I simply took out the characters and replaced them with pictures of my PCs. You can print out paper minis or draw them yourself. Lego men, chess pieces, dollar store toys will all work as minis. 
Use what you have. You can do this. Editing Niche here to tell you that I was on an episode of Tabletop. Tabletop is an awesome podcast about TTRPGs. We talked about crafting for tabletop games. Check it out anywhere you get podcasts. If you have an important boss fight coming up, or just a little extra time before your game, one hour is enough time to make a full 3D dungeon map. Let's do it. I started by scoring my foam board into a one inch grid. Scoring means carving lines that don't go all the way through. I used a pointy metal tool, but you could use a sharp pencil for this. Next I cut out a platform shape. This will make sense in a second. To make a platform with a built-in staircase, I will need to cut out a bunch of similar shaped pieces. I started by tracing this shape onto foam board, but making this section half an inch longer every time I cut it out. I did this four times to get the pieces that I needed. I glued those together and had a platform that my villain can monologue from. This alone would be a passable map and only took 15 minutes, but let's take it a step further. More levels means more shenanigans, so I'm going to make a couple quick staircases. I started by cutting out the frames of my staircases, then poked six holes into both sides. Then I cut a 1 inch by 2 inch base and glued both sides in place. Then I put a dab of super glue on each hole. Then poked a coffee stir stick through one hole into the other, trying to make sure that it was level. Do this five more times. Then trim away the excess stir sticks and you've got yourself a great looking staircase. Making platforms takes time, so I opted for the simpler solution, using trash. I have a bunch of these dice containers lying around, so I used them to make the platforms. I covered them in EVA foam so that they wouldn't look like trash, and then I glued the staircases to them. Now I have multiple levels and it's looking pretty good, but why not get a little crazier and add a centerpiece to this map? I got out a tea light and covered it in EVA foam to cover that gorgeous rose gold color. Then using techniques from my how to make hot glue elementals video, I made a hot glue fire effect. I cut a 2x2 two two foam board square to use as the base, and then cut a slightly smaller square out of EVA foam to add some detail. I didn't glue the tea light in place because I wanted to be able to turn it off and on. 
for one final crazy touch, I'm gonna make some pillars. I use these plastic things I found on the street and some bases from Star Wars Legion minis. But you can make pillars with whatever you have lying around. A tinfoil roll, dollar store square dowels, or a cork will make a realistic looking ruined pillar. I simply glued the plastic pieces to the bases using some super glue and then capped them off with some EVA foam. With all those pieces, I have an excellent looking map. But why not go a step further? I started weathering this terrain by adding a few scratches and broken tiles. I textured the foam board with some tinfoil and just poked it a lot. But that's not enough. To solidify my insanity, I'm going to dry brush some gray paint over this whole map. Dry brushing is when you take some paint, remove most of it with a paper towel until you're left with just a fairy's whisper of paint. With that, you brush over the edges of your piece. This highlights those edges and showcases your hard work. I did this over the entire map. When I got to the center, I added some orange to make a fire glowing effect. And then I added a little brown to make it look a little grimy in certain places. And with that, my hour was up and I had a really nice looking piece of terrain that I will definitely use in a home game. I hope this inspired you to start crafting for your D&D game. Anyone can craft and it doesn't have to be stressful. Most games don't have detailed maps for every session. These are the kind of maps that I use in my home game. If you try making that stuff, I encourage you to try making more and more elaborate builds. Watch my other videos to see what kind of crazy stuff you can make. In my next video, I'm going to finally delve into the world of Warhammer, so stick around for that. If you like this video, please consider subscribing and let me know what you'd like to see me make next time. Bye!